Welcome again to virtual worship from St. Andrew Lutheran and Monday Life. We're so happy that you can join with us in this way and worship in this way. I invite you now to join in the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, we're going to have a word for the children. If they're not here, or maybe you want to gather them around. Hi. Today I brought some plants. Some plants. Do you know what these are? When I've done this before, uh, the kids who were with me lying said, that's wheat. And you know what? It's not wheat. It's actually weeds. So you can tell it's kind of hard for us, isn't it, to tell the difference between weeds and wheat. Jesus today tells a parable, a story about the weeds and the wheat. And the story is that a master has planted a wheat field and all of a sudden there's wheat coming up among the wheat. And his servants say, should we go and pull the weeds right now so the wheat can thrive? And the master of the parable in the parable says, no, let them grow together. Because if you were pulling out the weeds, you might uproot the wheat. You might pull out some of the wheat with it. In fact, you might destroy the whole crop. So let them grow together until the harvest. Well, Jesus wasn't really talking about biology or botany. He was talking about good people and bad people. And he was saying, you know what? God will judge. Try not to judge the good from the bad because you might get it wrong. You might pull out the wheat instead of the weeds. So we are supposed to, well, first of all, we try to be good, and we acknowledge that we have been made good. We are, we are like the wheat. But there are bad. There are bad people around. Maybe they can change. That's the hope. But Jesus is trying to tell us that we should not be about judging, but let God be the ultimate judge. Will you pray with me now? Dear God, Dear God, thank you for making us wheat. Thank you for making us wheat. Help us to produce good fruit. Help us to produce good fruit. And help us to forget about the weeds. And help us to forget about the weeds. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Our lesson is from the 8th chapter of Romans, beginning with the 12th verse. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory which shall be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, 
in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly while we wait for the adoption of the adoption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and poured rain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, why did you not sell, sow good seed in your field? Did, where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A gnome is in the garden busily destroying some bushes when a house cat appears. A gnome, I mean G-N-O-M-E. The cat appears. What are you? asks the cat. A gnome comes the reply. I steal food from humans. I kill their plants. I make annoying music at night to drive them crazy. And I love mischief. And what, may I ask, are you? The cat thought and said, um, I'm a gnome too. <laughs> well, I don't believe in garden gnomes. But sometimes I think, like Jesus' parable, I think someone has come and sowed weed seeds in my garden. Because every year I weed out my garden and I try to make sure that um, the weeds aren't allowed to go to seed. Okay? I get them before they can seed themselves. But every year there's more weeds. 
How did they get there? Sometimes I feel like an enemy is sowing weeds in my garden, but it's probably just the wind. Jesus tells this parable today about the weeds and the wheat. And he tells it, I suppose, to a, a group of people who are wondering, you know, why there are people who are evil, very sinful, and why doesn't God separate them out? Why doesn't God, this is the, the question of all eternity, right? Why doesn't God prosper the good and just weed out the evil folks? And Jesus' parable talks about just let it be and let them grow together. The weeds and the wheat, let the weeds and the wheat grow together. And to me, this is, this makes no sense. I mean, I know I've got to weed my garden because the weeds, they take away the nutrients from the other plants. They crowd the other plants. Uh, they might shade the other plants if you let them grow too much. Of course, I, I don't know about wheat. I've never grown. But I'm not, Jesus is not talking about botany here. Jesus is telling a parable, and parables sometimes have hidden meanings. But Jesus says, you know what? To, uh, the par par Jesus talks about the parable and says, the owner says to the slaves, don't weed them now because you might uproot the wheat might uproot the wheat. So I showed the kids, you know, sometimes another thing might be, it might be hard to tell the difference between the weeds and the wheat. Let them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest, I will have the reapers come in and gather the weeds first and bundle them and uh, burn them, and then the wheat will be gathered into my granary. We're supposed to be the wheat folks. We're the good kernels, right? We're the good seed. And sometimes though, it's hard to coexist with other people, especially those who seem to be evil or at least bad. It's hard. We want, we want to be favored, don't we? We don't want to have the challenges we have from those who we consider evil. Jesus explains the parable to his disciples afterwards. He talks about, well, this is about the end time. The end of time, uh, the angels will separate the weeds, and the, the weeds will be burned, and uh, the righteous will shine like the sun. So we are the righteous, right? Now, we want to make sure that we're recognized as righteous, and that's why we graciously respond to the salvation that Jesus has given us. We want to be recognized as wheat. Now, what about the weeds? It's horrible. You know, Matthew likes to talk about the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew talks about this six times in his Gospels, weeping and gnashing of teeth. He uses this phrase. Uh, Luke uses it once and nowhere else in the New Testament is it, is it ever found. The interesting thing about this is that when Matthew uses this term, weeping and gnashing of teeth uh, and being burned, he, he is talking about people within the kingdom not outside of the kingdom. Isn't that interesting? Of course, the, the furnace and burning in Old Testament imagery, and remember Matthew harks back to the Old Testament more than any of the other gospel writers. It's, it's a sign of purification. Okay, kind of like there's that hymn, you know, about uh, the flame shall not harm you, I only tend your dross to consume. You know what dross is? Dross is the impurities in the metal and the gold. Your dross to consume and your gold to refine. So maybe we should think about that gnashing of teeth and weeping as what might happen to us. 
before we are refined for that kingdom of heaven, before we are refined. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go through the weeping and gnashing of teeth, but you know, I think at the end, when we stand in judgment, of course, you know, we are judged on the merits of Jesus Christ. But I think there will be some weeping as we look back at our lives and realize how uh, we have hurt people, perhaps, and how we have left things undone. We have our, our confession about things done and left undone. There are probably will be weeping for everyone, for everyone, as we look back. We could have done better. But yet, we are claimed by Jesus. We can't go away from the kingdom because he has claimed us. It's nothing that we do to what Jesus has done for us. The Apostle Paul in today's lesson talks about the Spirit. And that Spirit is with our spirit. And when we groan, Abba, Father, you know what Abba means? Abba is Aramaic for Daddy or Dada. When we say it, Abba, Father, like Father, have mercy on us. It is the Spirit of God with our spirit. In other words, we need to be about confessing our sins. We need to be about acknowledging our brokenness. We do. And then the weeping and gnashing of teeth at the end is not so bad. If we confess, if we acknowledge our need for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we do that, we are taking away the power of that weeping and gnashing of teeth. And as we go into the kingdom of God, refined, shining, bright, righteous people. We're not there yet. And we need to be careful about judging people. Jesus says in Matthew, if you're going to judge someone else, make sure you work on the boulder in your own eye before you try to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. We need to be about taking care of that boulder, about acknowledging our, our need for forgiveness, about acknowledging our need for a Savior. Let's be careful about judging. Because God is working, and God knows the heart. He knows the hearts of everyone. So leave the judging up to God. Do what's right. Be productive. Rejoice in your status, which has been given to you. Don't worry. But try to do what's best. To be productive wheat. And don't worry about it weeds, everything will be taken care of. Because God is all-knowing and all-powerful and all-loving and all-merciful and all-just has things under control. Amen. <laughs>
confident of your care, and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be diligent and patient, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the, the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Bring your healing wholeness to our world, hurting from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the new pastor that you are sending to us. May they be received with joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with those near you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord go before you to show you the way, beside you to be your friend, behind you to encourage you on, above you to watch over you, beneath you to uplift you, and within you to give you God's peace. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.
Yeah.